Welcome to Online Church today within the Holden team as we mark Mothering Sunday together. This day, <laughs> days is creating chaos as usual, this day has to a degree been hijacked by the commercial world. But it does, as you may well know, have very old origins. In the days when young people started work very early in their lives, they were allowed to go home and visit their mothers on this day, often presenting them with flowers. It was a day on which people were encouraged to worship in the mother church, which for some would have meant the cathedral. Celebrations were marked by eating simnel cake. Both customs, flower giving and cake eating, are alive and well and living on the Holden team. Today is called Refreshment Sunday. Midway through Lent, it allowed a relaxation of Lenten discipline. So there are lots of opportunities to give thanks and savour the joy today. However, we are in Lent and the sombre side of Lent is relevant too. It's a difficult day for many. Those who can't be mums, those who've lost children, those who've lost mothers those who feel inadequate about their own mothering and particularly this year those who will not be able to see their children because of covid precautions and restrictions and mothers who will not be able to see or touch or hold their mothers wherever you are why ever you've come, you're very welcome today. As we travel through the service together, there will be captions on the screen for us to share as usual. Our first hymn is going to be Lord, the light of your love is shining. And it reminds us of God's bigger pictures as we turn our eyes on him.
This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We say our opening prayer together. God our Father, your Son Jesus Christ lived in a family at Nazareth. As we meet together now, help us to learn more about what it is to love our families and friends as you love us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We light this candle to remind us that the love of God is like a light in our darkness. Blessed be God forever. We praise you, our God, for all mothers who have loved and laughed and laboured as they cared for their children. Blessed be God forever. We praise you, our God, for all mothers who have wept in sorrow and joy for their children. Blessed be God forever. We praise you, our God, for Jesus, born of a woman, nurtured in her love, and for Mary, a reminder of your patient, loving, waiting love. Blessed be God forever. On a daily basis, we tend to create distance between ourselves and God. So now we're going to address that distance. Let us remember how we have failed to value the love of others and to love others as Christ has loved us. Heavenly Father, your love gives us life from the moment of conception, yet often we fail to live as your children. Lord, forgive us. You have taught us that we should honour our parents and teach our children about you. Yet often we fail in our family relationships. Lord, forgive us. You hear us when we cry out for help. Yet often we are too busy or distracted to hear the cries of others. Lord, forgive us. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins, heal and strengthen us by his love, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. The church's special prayer for today. God of love, passionate and strong, tender and careful, watch over us and hold us all the days of our life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we're going to hear about one particular real mother, Hannah. You might remember her. She lived a long time ago and had found it very difficult to have children. She would prayed about it and at this point in her story, God had given her and her husband Elkanah a precious gift, a child who they had called Samuel. In due time, Hannah conceived and bore a son. She named him Samuel, for she said, I have asked him of the Lord. The man Elkanah and all his household went up to offer to the Lord the yearly sacrifice and to pay his vow. But Hannah did not go up, for she said to her husband, As soon as the child is weaned, I will bring him, that he may appear in the presence of the Lord and remain there forever. I will offer him as a Nazarite for all time. Her husband Elkanah said to her, Do what seems best to you, wait until you've weaned him. Only may the Lord establish his word. So the woman remained and nursed her son until she weaned him. When she had weaned him, she took him up with her, along with a three-year-old bull, an ephah of flour and a skin of wine. She brought him to the house of the Lord at Shiloh, and the child was young. Then they slaughtered the bull, and they brought the child to Eli. And she said, 
O oh, my Lord, as you live, my Lord, I am the woman who is standing here in your presence praying to the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord has granted me the petition that I made to him. Therefore I have lent him to the Lord, as long as he lives, he is given to the Lord. She left him there for the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A guilty pleasure of lockdown in recent months for me was watching the TV series The Great British Bake Off. So let's get really fanciful for a moment. You're a media celebrity on Bake Off with Mothering Sunday in mind. The challenge is rather surreal. You've got to make a mother. What ingredients would your recipe contain? What qualities make a good mother? I wonder what ingredients you leave out. I wonder what criteria you'd use for that. Perhaps mothers, grandmothers, godmothers we've known played a part in our decisions. As I acknowledged earlier, for some of us, Mothering Sunday or Mother's Day is an uncomfortable day, overshadowed by pain, loss and failure. For others, it's an opportunity to celebrate and rejoice in the examples of good mothering mothering not an entirely female province it seems that as early as the 14th century julian of norwich spoke of god as mother and father when expressing thanks for that nurturing loving characteristic of the divine the trait which results in the protection of others and takes pains over the development of the other in maturity. So, what we can feel like it, uh, a very exclusive Christian festival is in fact an inclusive one. Today's actually got something to say to each one of us. In the reading we just heard, Mum, Hannah, modelled a very tough, painful, generous kind of love. Here was a woman who had to wait for the desire of her heart. She then made the decision that this longed for gift must be shared with its giver. That is, she must share her son Samuel with God by allowing him to serve in the temple, which was a living role at that time. So she supplies two more ingredients to our recipe, endurance and generosity. Before we mix any more, we're going to listen to our next hymn and then we'll hear from the Bible again.
standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own home. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here, John's Gospel gives a powerful picture of Jesus, his mother and his good friend. Jesus is dying on the cross at this point and in spite of his own suffering, he still responds to the needs of others. After his death, there will be no one to look after his mid widowed mother, so he asks his friend, John, to do so. As with Hannah, those mothering qualities of love and self-sacrifice are very evident within him. In one respect, this is a very painful passage. It's a fearful scene. Whatever gospel account you read, although they do differ slightly about who is actually present. In this account, we are confronted by a dying son, a bewildered disciple, and a mother whose heart is breaking again, whose soul is again pierced by a sword, as Simeon had predicted. For this is the woman for whom there was no room at the inn whose baby Herod wanted to kill, who became a refugee in Egypt, who watched a nation misunderstand her son. As the Queen remarked at Ground Zero, grief is the price we pay for love. Our mothering in the widest sense of that term will bring anguish. In those times, Mary becomes an important figure of compassion and solidarity for all of us. As Mary thinks about her son, so Jesus thinks about his mother. Watching her pain must be torment. As the oldest son, he feels the responsibility of her future well-being. Although fully divine, he is fully human and could have taken refuge in self-concern but feeling the pain of others is part and parcel of living life fully many of us will identify with that experience not least in these pandemic times so back to Jesus on the cross, looking after his mother and his friend. Jesus entreats Mary to the, entrusts Mary to the disciple John, not to his brothers and sisters, who are still alive at this point in the story. So what's going on there? It seems that in the shadow of that cross, Jesus is creating a new kind of family. A new community is coming into being. Out of Mary and John, he is forming church. Church which is to be founded on hospitality, comfort and love. Tough love. As we take one last look at these three, we see them in circumstances of pain, loss and disgrace. Sometimes that is what Jesus asks of us. To immerse ourselves in messy human life through practical action or prayerful concern. Like Mary and John, we are given meaning, purpose and vocation. So to sum up, Hannah, Mary, John and Jesus in their mothering give us ideas for ingredients for our mothering Sunday bake-off recipe. Tough love, 
self-sacrifice, compassion, solidarity, purpose. We finish this period, this part of our service with a short period of silence. You might like to use that time to give thanks for good mothering you have experienced. Or perhaps you might like to give thanks for the mother church to which we belong. Or whoever you are, you might like to reflect on what ingredient you need more of in your mothering of others. And so with churches across God's world, we share statements of our faith. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And so now we turn to prayer. Let us pray to the bidding Lord of love. Please respond, help us and heal us. We take a moment to think of our mothers and all those who have loved and cared for us. Lord, for all they have given us, we thank you. And where they have failed us, please help us to forgive. Lord of love, help us and heal us. Let's think now of people we know of, in the news perhaps, who are in need of love and care, refugees, the homeless, those living in places where there is violence and war. Lord, may governments act with compassion. May aid agencies have your protection and our support. And will you change the hearts of those responsible for these crises? Lord of love, help us and heal us. Finally, let's think of people we know here in our road or school or community, for whom we can be true and loving friends and neighbours. Maybe they are lonely or difficult or not well or are coping with hard times or are disappointed or exhausted. Lord, make us aware of them and willing to be available knowing that you will help us. Lord of all, help us and heal us. We close our prayer time by saying together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. There will be a shortened communion for those of you who would like to stay for it, but for now, a final blessing. May God the Father help us to understand the depth of his love for us and share it with those around us. Amen. May Jesus Christ, his Son, set his peace in our hearts and make us bringers of peace. Amen. May the Holy Spirit grow in us its fruits of patience, faithfulness and joy. Amen. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us and all those whom we love now and always. Amen.
go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Remembering we're still in Lent, because this is also the fourth Sunday in Lent, here's a poem entitled Lent by the poet Anne Lewin from her collection Catching the Kingfisher. Lent is a time to learn to travel light, to clear the clutter from our crowded lives and find a space, a desert, Deserts are bleak, no creature comforts, only a vast expanse of stillness, sharpening awareness of ourselves and God. Uncomfortable places, deserts. Most of the time we're tempted to avoid them, finding good reason 
to live lives of ease, cushioned by noise from self-discovery, clutching at the world's success to stave off fear. But if we dare to trust the silence to strip away our false security, God can still grow his wholeness in us, fill up our emptiness, destroy our fear, give us new vision, courage for the journey and make our desert bloom like a rose. The peace of God be always with you. The Lord is here, his spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God, it is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ your Son. For in these forty days you lead us into a desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world. You free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendour of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends. Taking bread, he praised you. He broke that bread, he gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, to remember me. So, Father, we remember all Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross bringing before you the bread of life, the cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, bring us with all your saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. 
Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are all who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. But only say the word, and I shall be healed. Let us pray. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so, to a final blessing. God, give us grace to grow in holiness, to deny ourselves, to take up our cross, and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit rest upon you and all you will encounter in the coming days in his name. Amen. And so my brothers and sisters in Christ, go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>